Greetings, beloved. This is Dr. Felicia LeBoy, lead pastor and life coach at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois, with another motivational moment from the Bible. These motivational moments are designed to help you take what you learn in Sunday school, what you take in your from your private devotional time, and what you may be learning in church, and apply them to your everyday life. They are designed to not only motivate you, but to inspire you to become the mature Christian that God desires for you to be and for you to be all that God has gifted you to do and to be in this world. In this week's motivational moment, I want to talk about the importance of leaving a legacy. I'm not talking about the importance of leaving a legacy to demonstrate that you are a good parent or to leave a legacy in terms of a financial inheritance or a home or some property or things like that. I'm talking about what kind of spiritual legacy do you and I leave for the people around us? And when I say that, I'm not talking about the fact that people know that you went to church or that you worked at the food pantry. Um, did they know that you volunteered and things like that? I'm talking about, was there something about who we were in the world and our everyday life that demonstrated to people that we walked to a different drummer, that we heard something different, that we were clear about the fact that our this world was not our home and that we were accountable to God for what we do. Last week, we learned of the tragic death of Chadwick Boseman. Some know him as Jackie Robinson, but most famously, he portrayed the Kala or the Black Panther in the Marvel series. What was shocking to everyone is that for the last four years of his life, he was battling colon cancer, stage four colon cancer. So in the midst of shooting films and doing his own scenes and things like that, he was going to chemo, he was um, taking all kinds of treatments, all kinds of things were happening. And last week as I listened to a tribute that was done to his life, everyone that worked with him, the people that um, just kind of casually knew him and the people that knew him deeply, there was a consistency about who he was over and over again. What people said is that he was a quiet and a humble man, but he operated with such a level of excellence, not to condemn others, but to want them to be better people. In fact, it's really, it's been reported that Mr. Bozeman has said that one of the things he wanted to be able to do was that when he stood before God, he wanted to come to God with all of his talent, all of his gifts, completely and fully used up. And so if you look at his body of work from the time that he was diagnosed to the time of his death, what you will find is that he really made the most of his time the last four years of his life. But it wasn't only the acting and that kind of body that he worked over and over again during that uh, tribute. Many people talked about the fact that he often offered an encouraging word. There was a taping of his speech that he gave to the graduates at Howard University talking to them about taking the road less traveled and about not just assuming that everything ought to come easy, but to really believe that the things that were worth the work would be worth the wait and would be worth it and would be and could be God inspired and God powered. Everything about this man's life said that he trusted God, that he believed that God had a great thing for him to do, and that he would give God an account of what he had done. Man, I don't know about you, but I really hope that I lead that kind of life, that I lead the kind of life that everyone around me knows that I am a Christian person and that it's not marked by the things I do as much as it's marked by my love for God and my love for God's people, really my love for all people. Isn't that what you want too? As I heard Mr. Bozeman's tribute and as I thought about the message this week, I was reminded of the passage from Ephesians 5, in particular verses 15 to 17. See, in Ephesians 5, the Apostle Paul is telling the church at Ephesus, you should live as children of light. You should be doing good works and you should be... Um, blessing people and helping people and really giving them a reason to see and a way to see that God is real, that they are allowed to taste and see that God is not only real, that God is good. 
And in Ephesians 5, in particular, verses 15 to 17, Paul challenges the church at Ephesus and he challenges us, us as well when he says these words. He tells us to make the most of the time, to make the most of every opportunity because times are evil. And that the way we make the most of every opportunity is that we try and discern, really that we discern, we spend time with God and discern what the will of the Lord is for the time that we have. And I would add that we do that day by day, right? Beloved, the challenge for this week's motivational moment from the Bible is, are you and I making the most of our time or are we wasting time? Are we vegging out in front of the television or uh, sitting around and um, doing nothing? Or are we seeking ways to be a blessing? Do we hide our Christianity or do we spend time uh, when there's a crisis that we spend time, we show our children and our grandchildren that we pray over certain issues? Do folks know that they can come and talk to us? Um, because we carry a spirit of humility and we desire to love them. And so we, are, we have open arms so that they know that they can bring us their issues and their problems without fear of guilt and condemnation. I don't know about you, but like I said last week, I was incredibly humbled and very much challenged when I watched the legacy of this man, this one who played a superhero on the screen and was a real superhero in life. And I thought, man, I hope to be just like that when my time comes. Beloved, this is another motivational moment from the Bible. Be blessed and I'll catch you next week.